Welcome to Healthy Planet, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet on the Think Tech live streaming network series. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Joining me today is Lynn Kumick, vegan chef and author of Hawaii, A Vegan Paradise and Tasting Hawaii Vegan Style. Today, we're going to talk about vegan food. So Lillian, tell us about some of your new projects. I have been quite the busy bee, Grace. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the, actually, I'm, I'm in the, um, I'm actually doing a course now with the first uh, vegan patisserie course with the Le Cordon Bleu London venue, which is very, very exciting. I actually read about it in one of my vegan magazines that I subscribe to which by the way is a great idea if anyone is interested in going more plant-based, um, look out for some you know, uh, magazines that you might wanna subscribe to because they, they do really pack a lot of information. So I, I found out about it through one of those magazines and I'm now in my eighth week of the 10 week course and I'm learning all about traditional French pastries. Um, some of the recipes are from the 18th century. They're just incredible. I'm having a ball and it's like learning a whole new sort of world of cooking, something I'm not used to, um, something you definitely don't want to eat every day. Yeah. <laughs> how, the, how the French stay slim and, 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 you know, fit looking is beyond me because <laughs> these pa pastries, although, you know, dangerous in what they contain are pretty spectacular. So that's, that's one thing I'm doing. And I'm also writing my third book. Nice. So tell us more about the course. I'm wondering, uh, with the course, is it completely online? Is that how you're able to do, you do all the cooking online? Is it demonstrations? Mm -hmm. The course is, is only available online, unfortunately, because I'm the type of person that would actually be willing to go there for this course. Oh, um, so I'm, I am pushing the uh, chefs there and, and hinting that they should definitely open up one um, that isn't online. So this is an online course. Um, they give you assignments every week. It's full on actually. I, I kind of worry about some of the, the other students in the course that have full-time jobs because I'm spending about five to seven hours every day, five days a week um, wow. to, get these, to get these dishes pumped out. Um, French pastries I've learned are very, very fiddly. Definitely not something um, that uh, someone who doesn't like baking or cooking will enjoy. <laughs> it's a lot of work. And I think it's more for people like myself who are kind of a bit advanced when it comes to cooking or, or perhaps the home cook who's really, you know, into trying new things. So it is online. You get assignments. You get graded every week. How yes. can they feed you when they don't taste the stuff? That, that's the only thing they don't taste, but you have to send in a lot of photos of the, the process as you're cooking each each uh -huh. dish. Wow. Um, yeah, and there's they go through things like uh, food handling, um, sanitizing your kitchen, cleaning your kitchen. It's it's exactly what I would expect from Le Cordon Bleu, uh -huh. to be quite honest. They, they have absolutely smashed this course in that it is, very, very professional, very thought out. Um, and for an online course, well worth the money. So if anyone out there who's interested in upping their game uh -huh. <laughs> in uh, the pastry world, definitely go and check it out. I, I believe Le Cordon Bleu London is the only one that does the, it uh, has uh -huh. the, the course available in English. So, so the, what was their inspiration to do a vegan course? I don't know personally how how it came about, but my guess is that they're 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 getting getting yeah, yeah. <laughs> with the idea. Yeah, they're getting yeah. onto the idea that That's people want to people want to learn more about plant based cooking. Uh, more people are going plant based, and this course also offers a lot of gluten free options oh, as great. well I was as. Gonna just ask you that. That's funny mm -hmm. that you brought it up. Yes, that's great. I actually, I'm I. I don't have a problem consuming gluten, but my second book, Tasting Hawaii Vegan Style, is actually gluten-free as well as um, plant-based. So I did learn a lot about gluten, gluten-free cooking, but this course is just, it takes you into, you know, the, the, the really just the, um, 
the whole basics of, of gluten-free cooking, which is something like, that's hard to learn it unless is you're in so something difficult. like this and manipulating different flours and starches to make, you know, the perfect oh, gluten-free, you know, combination for whatever it is you're cooking. So it, it is a very good learning experience and a nice segue um, into my writing as I, as I move along with my next book so very exciting so the, i'm curious um with the gluten-free flowers what kind of flowers do they use to kind of make things taste like they're not gluten-free i mean i guess that's mm. the, that's the well, goal right because the gluten yeah some of the things don't really taste like you know you would like them to taste like when you mm -hmm. see gluten, so i agree absolutely i've never been a fan personally, of gluten-free baking or gluten-free baked goods. Um, when it comes to anything else outside of that realm, like vegetable dishes or, or stuff like that, really, I can't tell the difference between the gluten-free or the non-gluten-free. But when it comes to baking, you are working with various different starches. The starches can be anything from potato starch, potato starch, corn starch, we use a lot of nut flours in French uh, pastries. So I've learned, um, learned that I very much dislike having to sieve almond flour or ground almonds, yeah. <laughs> which is something that we use a lot as well in gluten-free baking. So basically nut flours and um, obviously anything that doesn't contain wheat. And pretty much these days you can, you can get a whole range of um, nut flowers online and stuff a little bit limited with what we can get here in Hawaii mm -hmm. but you can also make it too yeah Lillian so absolutely oh. um, making nut flowers is as simple as using dried nuts and then grinding them either in a coffee grinder or um, a food processor if you have one that's strong enough and that 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 will work as well I'm actually making today um, a chocolate tart Oh, from, nice. from the that 18th century wow. yes and it uses chestnut flour now mm -hmm. chestnut flour cannot be found anywhere on the island and mm -hmm. it's it is quite expensive quite pricey so mm -hmm. I did manage to just buy my own chestnuts and I've baked them and dried them out and it's quite a long it's a, it's a lengthy it's process awesome. to be honest so you know delving into something like this is more for again the advanced cook but if you're into learning more about plant-based cooking honestly just jump online to check out a few magazines that you might want to subscribe to because when things like that are getting delivered at your door mm -hmm. to your door you know once every month or how whatever the subscription is um you're going to start learning a lot just by reading you know take your magazine down to the pool or the beach and and read and learn because plant-based cooking is not difficult, doesn't have to be difficult. Mm -hmm. Are there magazines that you would recommend to somebody who's starting out? Mm -hmm. um, there are so many. I Seriously, I subscribe to so many. There's actually a UK-based one that I really, really love. It's called Vegan Food and Living. That's an excellent one. That's, you, you can also get these subscriptions um, e-subscriptions if you don't want the the hard cover which can yeah. be quite quite expensive um that's a good one bon appetit is another one um, i like there's there's yeah. vegan stuff in bon, bon appetit there is yes i like bon appetit it's not a vegan one but they do yeah. they do add a lot of vegan stuff i i like magazines that don't focus on smoothies um too much because i'm kind of getting over you know smoothie after smoothie after <laughs> smoothie i yeah, think well, they're very easy to make too so it's not like there's much involved you know it's not yes like something, so yes so just yeah that's that would be my advice um pick up a few recipe books barnes and noble here in ala moana have an excellent rain they have an excellent collection of vegan cookbooks um i go in there all the time and i collect cookbooks uh, i have <laughs> I have it's so many. Yeah, I know it's, me too. I have so many, and I'm not even a chef or anything. I just <laughs> well, collect yeah. them and collect them and collect them. I'm trying not to collect them, but now I've been collecting them on my Kindle too. So I got to stop. But <laughs> I know one can get quite carried away. I admit yeah. that there's nothing like having a collection of cookbooks. And you know, whenever you have guests and they're going through your bookshelf or your collection, mm -hmm. it's always fun to just pull out 
pull out cookbooks and if anything stare at the photos and drool yeah <laughs> and see how far um, plant-based cooking has come that's true uh it's just show us some of the i guess michael if you could show us some of the pictures of the things that lillian has made and if she could um if you could just tell us you know there's some picture of um there's some bread there i think on the right mm -hmm. Yep, the bread on the right is um, actually, that's the gluten-free bread, I believe we're looking at. There's oh, wow. a focaccia, some bread rolls. I mean, look at how beautiful and rustic looking they are. These are recipes from the Le Cordon Bleu course, which again, uses a lot of um, almond flour, uh, not yeah. almond flour, sorry, ground, ground almonds, not almond flour. Um, yeah, my Instagram is, yeah, I was gonna say if, um, if anyone is interested, take a look at my Instagram page. It's Lillian Vegan Underbar Chef Hawaii. And you can see what I'm getting up to. There's lots of lots of pictures of my my dishes and some of the dishes that I have in my my cookbooks. The first one, Hawaii, a vegan paradise, which came out um just over two years ago. Yeah, I can't so, believe it's two years. <laughs> yes it's gone quite fast and then my second one came out just last december so um time to to get the third one out as soon as as soon as i i feel it's the right thing and the right timing mm -hmm. so i want to um before we move on to your third book i want to um ask you about something that i kind of have a craving for but mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily good for you but they're really good. Uh, and I don't know if they teach you how to make these in um, French cooking, uh, but you know how they have those um, little eclairs and like cream puffs? Mm -hmm. Do they teach you how to make those in the patisserie <laughs> class gluten free? Because I haven't had one in years and I'm just, I'm just waiting for the day I can have one again <laughs> because now that I'm vegan and gluten free, there's, mm -hmm. you know, there's nowhere I can buy that. So I, I have to tell you, when I went through the recipes that we were going to be learning in the 10 week course, one of the things I was actually disappointed that I did not see um, in the recipe section was the chocolate eclair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I, I, I'm with you on that one. I agree that I used to eat a lot of ch chocolate eclairs when I was growing up as well. I grew up vegetarian. Yeah. I never ate meat or fish, but I did eat a lot of junk food, uh -huh. um, anything that didn't have, you know, meat or fish in it. I, I thought that was fabulous. Uh, the worst diet I've ever been on, actually. Yeah, I think the vegetarian diet is uh, one of the worst things you can do. If you're going to try and clean up your diet, I would just say go, go out, go all out and, and try and try and get plant based or at least 80 percent plant strong. Um, so the chocolate eclair, I, I'm afraid I'm, I can't <laughs> give you any hints on that, but we've done a lot of cream and a lot of um, chocolate, or, yeah, a lot of ganaches and stuff. So it's oh, very I love that kind of stuff. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I do too. But you know, Grace, food doesn't always have to be good for you. Um, I, I believe that we do have to treat ourselves sometimes. And for me, as someone who is trying to um, reach more people and 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 let more people know about how good plant-based cooking can be i need to be aware and i am aware of the fact that not everybody wants to eat a smoothie and a salad <laughs> because you're not going to bring them over to the green side if yeah. you know if they think it sucks if the food doesn't taste good that's so true. one thing i do try to do um definitely in my books is is showcase everyday food that that people normally eat that is the vegan version um so in both books the the hawaiian themed books that i did write both of them are exactly that there's there's one smoothie in the first book <laughs> and and nothing else and no smoothie recipes in the second <laughs> book they're all like there's amazing um burgers in in the book there's breads pa pastries cakes chocolate cakes um desserts to die for and uh it's everyday food and i think that's why my books have been selling well because people who are not plant-based want to eat normal food and not feel like they're missing out on anything the first thing that people say 
when they talk about how they could never go vegan is, but I could never give up cheese. I could never give up meat. But really nowadays we have so many substitutes. Um, it's not that difficult to do. It's all up here in the mind. Once yeah. you can change the mindset and um, look at a vegan burger the way that you did a regular burger, I think that's where you're going to make the shift very quickly. So tell us about your new book then that we are working on right now. You mm -hmm. have a title yet? No, and <laughs> I wouldn't call it a new book because it's, it's not anywhere near there. Um, I don't want to give too much away because I people sure. are kind of ex wondering what's going to come next, given that both books were Hawaii themed. The only reason I, I wrote the second book um, in, in that manner with the Hawaiian um, theme was because when I was writing my first book about Hawaiian food, I realized I had so many more recipes to go. Both of them have over 120 recipes in each book. And I could probably still write a third book on Hawaiian food if I wanted to, but my roots are, are in cooking are not in Hawaiian, um, in the Hawaiian cuisine. I'm actually a trained Japanese chef. Mm -hmm. So um, in my next book, I guess you could probably expect a lot of umami flavors. Oh, nice. I love mm. that kind of stuff. Yeah. But something very different. Um, and it definitely will be food that will bring out the curious cook in you so I love making food that people just you know want to take photos of or, or can't believe is vegan stuff like that fun fun stuff but but food that makes a lot of sense at the same time so when you said um you said you were trained in Japan so mm -hmm. did you go to a vegan cooking school in Japan or what kind of I mean, what did you do back then? Because mm -hmm. sure, maybe it was not as friendly to vegans. I don't really know what Japan is like. I do know they have a lot of vegan restaurants available now, but I don't know what it was like when you became vegan. Mm -hmm. That's a great question um, that I do get asked a, a lot. So when I decided that I was going to go into the culinary world somehow, I was very young. I lived in Japan for 30 years. I moved there when I was 18 years old. And in my early 20s, I realized that I did want to just go into the vegan, the cooking world, but I did not want to have to handle any meat or fish. So this was a challenge. And no cooking school in Japan or outside of Japan, for that matter, at the time, would accept me as a student because I refused to touch anything that was not plant-based. So that was a challenge. And then I knew that I wanted to open a restaurant. I had already planned in my vision that at 30 years old, I was going to, I was going to open my own restaurant. And I, I did. Um, in April 1st of that year, I turned 30. And so for the 10 years or eight years leading up to that, I just did as much studying on my own as I could. Um, and I held lots and lots of dinner parties. And every time I did, people would say, you should open a restaurant. That was actually what I was going to do the whole time. I did get some private lessons with chefs there, Japanese chefs who are friends of mine who, who do run uh, or did run uh, um, restaurants there. So that's how I did it. That's how I learned. And uh, in Japan, outside of Japan as well, if you work in a commercial kitchen as a head chef, for three years or more, that is how you get the title chef. So when I was thinking, how am I going to become a chef without actually going to a school? Because there was no way in the world I would be, you know, de digging my knife into a, a, a dead animal. Absolutely not. Gross. Yeah. Um, so I thought, okay, that, that, that works for me. I'll open my restaurant, hire people to work for me. I'll work in the kitchen. I was confident and um, three years into that, I, I had my restaurant, my dining bar for 10 years. It was a vegetarian dining bar. I still hadn't turned vegan then, but um, apart from cheese, I really didn't use anything else. Um, it was mainly plant-based. So that's how I became a chef. I did that for 10 years. And then after that, I opened a school, a cooking school. Oh, I'm nice. actually, yeah. So I'm a, a cooking, I've been a cooking instructor for a very long time, about 20 years. And that's how it all began. And then I moved to Hawaii. 
three and a half years ago. And as they say, here we are. <laughs> so tell us about those dinner parties you've been having and how Sam Choi ended up going to your dinner party. Mm, I have actually been um, so humbled and so blessed to, to meet some of the, the best chefs here in Hawaii. Uh, two of which you just named, Alan Wong and, and Sam Choi, they were introduced to me through friends um, and they've been to, I've cooked seven course vegan dinners for them quite a few times. I was also on Sam Choi's show cooking uh, in the kitchen with Sam Choi uh -huh. a few months ago. You, if you want to see that, just um, Google Lillian Kumik Sam Choi's in the kitchen and you'll see that show. So that was a lot of fun. Um, I am actually fortunate to be, to be meeting a lot of very influential people here in, in the culinary world, and we're all bouncing ideas off of each other. But one thing that I do hear a lot um, when it comes to vegan food and the stuff that they're trying with me is they didn't know vegan food could be so good. So I think it's, you know, the more we spread the vegan love in restaurants and you know, really try to get more vegan options in restaurants, in non-vegan restaurants in Hawaii. Um, I think that's going to open up a lot of a lot of opportunities for people who dine out a lot to eat a little bit healthier. So something I, I'm very keen on getting involved in, for sure, getting more vegan options onto restaurant menus. And how about the vegan show that you are going to develop? Any new updates on that? No, <laughs> that yeah. When 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 that happens, it will be um yeah. It will be. I'll let you know. You'll be okay. the first to know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so if viewers want to kind of learn about your cooking or get more information on recipes you make and see it live, can you tell them about your YouTube channel and? Mm -hmm. Other ways they might be able to, I think you have a website as well, correct, Lillian? Yes, sure. Um, you can definitely reach me. I'm, I kind of go by the pseudo name Lillian Vegan. So if you Google Lillian Vegan, um, lots of things will come up. My webpage is also under that name. My webpage has links to all of my social media and my YouTube channel, which I must say I haven't been posting many recipe videos on recently as, as I have been quite busy um, doing other things. But my YouTube channel does have about 200, around 200 recipe videos. I'm, I'm more active on my Facebook page and Instagram. Instagram, again, it's Lillian Vegan underscore Chef Hawaii. And my Facebook page also is Lillian Vegan. So Google Lillian Vegan and you should be able to find me. You can definitely reach out. I do a lot of things here, but a lot of them are private, um, most, mostly privately booked events. So anytime I do like things like book signings at the Kagako Farmer's Market, I'll post that and people can bring their books in if they want them signed or mm -hmm. want to come and say aloha and have a little chat. I'm actually going to be at the Kakako Farmer's Market this Saturday. Um, okay. I can't remember the date, I'm afraid. This okay. Saturday uh, from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. So I'm doing about once every two months. So definitely um, pop over and say hello if you like. That sounds great. And um, I guess... I'm really excited to taste some of your things. I'm wondering if you're ever going to do a gluten-free um, seven-course dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, first, I have to convince the masses because people who are not gluten-free get a bit scared of the word gluten-free just because they've had bad experiences with yeah, yeah, um, with standard. things tasting good. Yeah. And that, that's, the only, that, that's the only downfall about gluten-free food. Yeah. I think... Again, going back to what we spoke about, when it comes to gluten-free baked goods like breads, pastries, rolls and, and stuff like that, that's where I think um, it's definitely an acquired taste. But when you think about vegan food in general, like, you know, the average stir fry, the, the salad, the tofu dish, the curries, things like that pretty much by default are normally gluten-free. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, yes, I, w- I will definitely keep that in mind for you, Grace, once <laughs> I can convince a few more people to come to it. <laughs> or maybe if you could just make cream puffs, I'll buy them off you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now, now, you've got, now you've got my um, interest peaked for sure. <laughs> Okay, so we're out of time, so we have to wrap it up. But I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. This is Healthy Planet on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We've been talking with Lillian Kumick, vegan chef and author. Thanks to Michael, our, our cast engineer, and the rest of our crew at Think Tech for hosting our show. And thanks to you, our listeners, for listening. I'll see you on August 5th for more of Healthy Planet on Think Tech, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet. Our next show will be featuring Alicia Nunez, of Tamales Oahu. If you have ideas for the show, please contact me at healthyplanetthinktech at gmail.com. Check out my website at graceinhawaii.com for more information on my projects, including future show guests. I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. Aloha, everyone. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.